All right, what is going on, guys? Um, yeah. What are you, Discord now? <laughs> uh, hello. All right, so today we're going to be looking at Substance Painter. I'm even going to just use a mouse. Are you ready? <laughs> it's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. Trust me. How are you guys doing? Scott, what's going on, man? How you doing? Oh, ZBrush. <laughs> Pixelogic just started streaming too, guys. Okay, so, pack in your bags. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, nice, you're working on the clock. Very good. Okay, so, Oh wait, you know what I need to do is I need to lower the music here and then turn this back up so that we can get all of our little sound effects from people following and stuff. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a little scattered for a second here. Portfolio queue, gotta get that. So how are you guys doing? You guys doing all right? Doing good? <laughs> uh, I mean, I may dance, we'll see. I don't wanna to become too unprofessional. You know what I'm saying? I'm just making sure I can see when someone uh, follows or, or whatnot. Boss, what's up, man? Rasmus, how you doing? Anyways, okay, so on Sunday, I went through and modeled this guy, this thingamabob. Um, this one right here is the high poly. It may not look like it, but this is the high poly. So I, I went ahead and did some um, vertex weighting. So I can select like faces and stuff and then uh, weight them so that when I... <laughs> Wow, that one's not working. Give me a second here. This one. So, for example, this piece. Like, obviously this is bad, but you can't see that, so... You can't see that in the bake. Anywho. So, I'll weight this face so that it, uh, it holds when I, when I subdivide it. Can you see that? And then uh, I use the rounded shader to get a nice round edge. On, on that piece, and then I just have it like sticking into these pieces, and then these are all round edging together. Um, then I duped that mesh and made uh, a slightly more optimized version. It's not all that much different. Join the Discord. Popo, how you doing? Oh, that's cool, I motivate you to stream, or to work on your art, I mean. Hey, Curious. So I went ahead and optimized this one a little bit. It's not all that clean or perfect. Um, I did some Boolean pieces, like this piece here, which used to be like one, two, three, four pieces. Uh, I did a few other optimizations, like the, it's not clean at all. Um, like, if I took some more time, I'd probably model this slightly differently. And then, as far as UVs go, I actually um, went ahead and just auto-unwrapped. So I didn't do any of the smoothing. Are you allowed to use sub subdivide for games? Uh, no. I mean, I don't know of any game that does it. I mean, someone might be doing it. I know there's games that do um, vector. In, in games in real time. But, uh, so I just did like an auto unwrap and then packed it. And then these rings were, uh, they were full rings, so I just split them in half and then packed it again and then just stuck these guys inside of the little negative gaps. These guys you can't even see, like they're, they're on the inside, so probably don't even need them. Anyway, so I packed all that, uh, and then I went into shading 
I added a material to this whole mesh. I didn't even, I didn't do any cages, uh, which is bad because there's obvious errors from it. And because I did an auto unwrap, I didn't get the controlled edges for the bake. But the idea, what's up, Neil? The idea is to just get something decent so that we can get it into Painter and I can just talk about Substance Painter. So I added a, I made a new image. I told it that it was a normal map and then I right clicked on this. I did bake object from texture. I said 30 millimeters was the distance from the, from this mesh and that's kind of like a cage. And then I hit bake and I got this. Uh, you can see like the difference. So for sure, this will make anyone cringe at this edge here. You can see it. It's pretty, uh, pretty gnarly and Oh, look at this one. Oh, ugh. oof. Yeah, I feel it. Anywho, you're seeing it from back here. And this is being viewed in Moto, right? So. Yeah, mesh, mesh name matching in uh, Substance Painter. You can still get some skewing. But like this round edge shading stuff, like you can't do that in Substance Painter right now. So that's the only reason I'm baking in here. So then I took this texture, which you can tell in this viewport is not linear. Uh, it's just previewing it non-linear for some reason. Uh, I saved it out linear in color space. Rick would die. Dude, yeah, he would. I'm waiting for him to come in here and start telling me about how my roughness values are wrong and my materials look like crap. I can't wait. Martin, what's up, man? Doru. Bogdan, what's up, man? So I went ahead and exported that out, and then I took this mesh, exported this out as low poly. Then I actually took the high poly mesh. Uh, if you look at the wireframe, um, this is without some of them divided. I went ahead and made this one where I did divide it, just so that I had some of the rounding um, for that would match the, the low poly for like how many how many edges there are for um, yeah to just match the high poly a little bit more if I need to bake in painter so now we're in painter I'm gonna just do new um, metallic rough so here's the low poly go ahead and select that we'll do 2048 for the document resolution because because we want stuff to look cool uh, it's not exclusive to moto but it's probably one of the easier ones to do it. Blender has it. Uh, Maya, I believe, has it if you use Mental Ray. But I could be wrong about that. MP314, what's up, man? Multiplayer Pi. I hope that's your name. That'd be so cool. Yeah, so the rounded shader, just a really quick glance at it, uh, is like even... So like this mesh and this mesh are separate, right? I'll just do this, I'll hide these. You can see the round edge helps you transition between uh, two separate geometries. Even though they're not welded, it can give you a pretty nice bevel if you have good unwraps and uh, good smoothing. So like it does a really good job of um, transitioning all that stuff. So I will say UV stacking, uh, the way I've, before we get into Substance Painter, I'm gonna say the way that, Astro, what's up, man? Asterix, how you doing? Uh, the way that I have built this is not really friendly for game development, as far as like putting it in a game in real time, because in reality, you're not gonna make a 2048 unique normal map for something that's probably gonna be about that big on the game screen, right? That'd be crazy. Kenu, what's up? But if you like zoom in, and if it was like um, a first person game where you actually interact and grab this and your character grabs it with his hand and rotates it and opens the whatever valve, the, uh, what is it, the, the sphere valve, the ball valve, I think is what these are technically called. Um, then it, you would have like a nice up close, really good bake with a unique texturing pass on the whole thing, right? So it'd be more of a hero prop. But in reality, you would probably cut this whole thing. You'd cut this in a fourth. 
Uh, you'd bake that, you'd mirror it four times. You would take like this piece here, you would do that once, and then you would dupe it four times. This whole top piece here, like all this detail down here probably wouldn't be there. These holes would be capped and maybe like, um, be like a button that's baked into the normal instead. Or like, it would be a bake like this and then, but this would all be one mesh and you wouldn't even, you wouldn't even think about like that being open. Uh, yeah. And then like these edges here might not even be there. Like it, it might be more of like uh, this face and then a line that goes in, like an edge that goes in to this face. So those would connect and then go along back the other way. So this loop wouldn't be here. This area wouldn't be there. It gets quite low. Wes, what's up? How you doing? Did I miss a lot? You missed some things. <laughs> it's all good though. So anyways, so we baked all this out. I'm going into Substipator. Uh, I'm switching the normal map to OpenGL just because I think that's what I had baked it at. I can't remember. Uh, so the low poly is the, the file mesh that we're looking at. And then for the bakes, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab the low poly normal that we had baked out. So we'll bring that in here. All right, here's the low poly. Um, and then I need to go ahead and go to textures, select normal map, and then select that guy. So you can see in here, I'm still getting a pretty nasty edge right there. So like a good bake would really help, right? Boiled Spud, hey, what's up, man? Thanks for the, the, the host. Did I have a host sound? I didn't hear a host sound. Are you covering different to different topics today? No, I'm gonna be. We're gonna be in Substance Painter the whole stream. Why is this read only? That's weird. Quilly Willie, what's up, man? How you doing? We're looking at uh, Substance Painter. I have coffee too. This is great. We haven't had Oatly uh, I Cafe milk in weeks. I think it's been a week and a half. Uh, a shortage, if you will. Fancy Moto, uh, how's it going, man? So we've we've brought in the normal that we bake. We've got our low poly from from Moto, but I need to bake maps. I'm gonna do a twenty forty eight because we want it to look awesome, um, and then I'm going to uh, let's see here. I'm gonna turn the normal off because we already have a normal map, and then I'm gonna actually point to the the mesh of the high poly, which you can see. It says we have a mesh in these ones. Um, if there's no symbol here, you actually don't need a mesh. Or um, actually, if I delete this guy, you can see it's like, oh, there's no mesh. It's freaking out. It will actually, if, if you bake without a mesh, it's going to fill these slots in by baking the low poly in its place. So that's kind of cool. So we'll go, we'll grab the high poly. The high poly, again, like I was saying a little bit ago, is um, ugh, different camera controls, is this one that I manually subdivided and it's all nasty. Look at that. Oh my god, it's so good. Mm. So we're just using that so we can get some of the nice normal and AO stuff. Shamba, what's up? Uh, yes, let's, let's continue. So let's go ahead and bake this. This might eat the stream frame rate for a second. Bear with us. Now it says baking blue on there. The reason it says that is because the mesh that I exported the FBX, uh, the material that was on it at the time was called blue. So if you just name it to something, more particular, it'll say that there. Uh, yes, let's look at, so if you press B, you can go through all your maps. You see we got okay maps, they're kind of dirty. Like that looks, I don't even, I don't know. World space looks pretty nice. Uh, the AO looks pretty good, there's some issues. It's good enough, in my opinion. Like, you're back here, you don't know, I don't even, it's whatever. 
I don't care. I don't care. I do not bake with mesh name. I brought in the normal. Um, there's not even a cage, and wherever it's really close together, the padding is killing it because this is one mesh. I did not separate anything out. I didn't do the the clean clean approach. But um, normally you would separate out pieces that you think are going to interfere with each other for the bake. For example, right in here. Uh, and you can name those separately, and you can bake by, when you go in here, you can bake by the name of the mesh. Uh, so that way it separates out all the pieces that are based off the same name, bakes those out separately, and then combines all the maps back together. Pretty, pretty handy. So I'm pressing B to go through these maps that are baked. If you press C, you'll go, you can see up here, you're going through all the other maps that exist. So press M to go back to everything kind of compiled back together. I need to actually, uh, if you notice your frame rate in here is pretty rough, you can look around here for, where is it at? Oh no, the quality is low. Okay, that's good. Uh, sometimes this quality is, is really high. It's set to ultra for your shader parameters. And that, for some people, will affect your frame rate. Okay, let's, let's start texturing this thing. So in Substance Painter, <laughs> Shamba, I know, man, it's pretty rough. Wait, is it? I'm saying Shamba, but it's Shamamba. It's nice to meet you, by the way. I don't, I don't really remember your name. Um, so we've got this. I like to think, material-wise, I like to think in layers. Because in reality, like stuff is layered, right? Or it's an effect that's happening to a existing material. So uh, usually I just go into like materials or maybe even smart materials. Type in like let's go, let's go steel, um, and we'll look at what is in here. So we got like steel rust. If you hold your mouse over it, you get a little preview. Um, now in the most recent Substance Painter, you can drag. It directly onto the mesh. Wow, that is that's some dirty. So smart materials are folders consisting of a bunch of maps. Shamaba, dude, cool. No one gets it right though. It's cool. Welcome to globalization. I love it. I'll try and remember that. Shamaba. So, uh, Smart Materials, for anyone who does not know, is essentially a folder where you can make adjust, like you make the folder. What I usually would do is, there's no folder. You make all of your layers like you would like. Um, oh, right, you can move this around now. That's kind of cool. This is like a bounding volume. This is the most recent Substance Painter. So you can actually like change the information of the rust itself, since it's triplanar. Anywho, so we've got all these layers that exist, right? We don't need that one, that one's the base one. So if you actually take these and like control G, you will group them. Obviously it's grouped inside of that, let's drag it out on top. We'll just delete that one. So let's say this is your material. You can like double click this and you'd be like, yeah. So that you've got your yeah material. You get it looking just right. And then you can right click on this and you can create smart material. And uh, let's do that. So you right click, create smart material. And then lo and behold, in your smart materials folder at the bottom, you've got your shader called yeah. Yeah, got yeah. Yeah material. Yeah. <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrible. Yeah, Wes, I used uh, Moto for the uh, normal bake. Anywho, so we have our yeah material. So if I delete this and then we just drag it on here, you, you will get all of your, it's like saving your preset. It's like a preset, essentially. It'll save all of your mask information and all that jazz. That's how you get the temple stone materials that I have that everyone keeps asking for. <laughs> uh, we can actually drag that on here. See how that goes. 
it's not bad. There's some stretching. Obviously, uh, my manual UV, my automatic UV stuff is not helping out. We can actually debug that too if you want. So if we want to locate that edge, the moss works strangely well. Yeah, yeah, it does. It's weird. So first, let's I guess let's diagnose some stuff that's going on. So we've got our moss. The moss in general looks relatively good, minus maybe a bit of stretching. If you alt click on the mask, you can view the mask and see what's going on here. Definitely some weird stuff going on right here. So looking into that would probably be a good idea. There's some weird stuff here. It's just, oh wow. Okay, so if you ever see these squares, remember we're, we're hopping all over the place. If you ever see these squares, it's usually a, uh, what is that madness? I can't see what, why, why can't I see? There we go. There we go, it's MP, uh, it's multiplayer uh, pi. Thanks for the, uh, thanks for the follow. You like that name? <laughs> so if you ever see these squares, this usually mean that you've got a uh, scratches scatter on and it can go negative, which gives you black squares and then white squares if you go the other way. So you just go in and uh, essentially remove those. And double click that value and just zero it out. There you go. Uh, then we've got that seam there. It looks like, oh no. Okay, never mind. So we've got that seam there. We got some seams here. I'm assuming that seam is there because uh, let's see here. What I basically what I start doing is just grabbing stuff and moving it around, just to see what happens, and then hitting Control Z. Okay, so that looks to be affecting the edge. Oh, look at that. Moss doesn't do that. What are we doing? So if you press M, it'll go back to this view. So if I turn the moss off, so you can see that that edge is still there. So let's just keep going down the list of stuff. So there's the lichen. The stone looks like it's stretching quite a bit. Drips are doing okay. The drips look all right. Let me just do alt click on that. Other than uh, this banding, which is kind of hard to get away from, it's that's the. Uh, so when you click on your mask for this channel, or for this layer, you can see that you have these uh, filters that are below it, and then these are all the things that are causing uh, the effects to the mask. So if we go to the MG Dripping Rust, you can see that there is a sample amount. The more samples you have, the more, this is kind of like, uh, oh, what is it called? Parallax occlusion when you can see the layering. So this is just the sample count. I wonder if you can go past. No, nope, you can't. So it caps at 32, which is kind of sad. You can uh, drip smooth to kind of melt them together, which is actually what they do in parallax occlusion to try and hide the that layering effect as well. Um, so that looks a little better. There's some weird stuff happening with things like that. but. Let's go ahead and keep going down the chain. So we've got, that one looks pretty good. Okay, now we're getting into the, there it is, this guy, corrosion. So we all click that, we're getting all types of gnarly stuff. We're getting some stretching here, we got some seams. Let's see what we can do about that, oops. Off, what's up man? How you doing Julian? So we got a seam there, I'm assuming it's a texture because there's texture information in here, right? So so it looks like it's probably the first texture. And usually when you see an edge like that, it usually means that triplanar is off. So triplanar, what triplanar does is it projects this, this pattern uh, on your X, Y, and Z, kind of like you would do a, an auto unwrap. Uh, so if you check that, oh yeah, no, it's not fixing it. There's also a, a triplanar contrast, which uh, is just affecting the uh, blend between the three planes. Blue Trooper, what's up, man? How you doing? 
man, I'm glad I had that coffee. There's so much to talk about. <laughs> so maybe there's another texture. Hey, look at that. There is another texture. Let's go. Let's go into that texture. The triplanar is not on in that one either. Let's go ahead and turn that one on. Contrast that up. No. So yeah, what I usually do when I'm just kind of digging around is just look around for stuff. Like look around and see what happens when you do things. So you can see if I actually turn the the contrast down, I can start getting rid of the edge information there, that edge problem. Now if you're like really liking how everything is looking, and you're like, oh, I don't want to, there are ways to uh, paint that out. Like if you right click on this layer, you should be able to add a paint layer, which goes on top of the stack. This is not recommended just because uh, projects on three planes. That's why it's triplanar. Fun facts. <laughs> facts with Tish. Uh Oh yeah, look, we're getting some in here too. So when you create this paint layer, it allows you to go in and, and paint whatever you want uh, as far as black and white because you're in the mask state. If you right click, you'll get the same panel that you have here. So if you want, you can hide all this stuff and just right click when you need to do things. Again, tap will hide all your stuff. Right clicking will give you this, this action. So, and then you can preview your brush here. Whoops. Oh yeah, see, I don't have my layers though. This is, this is not working out for me. Um, let's go ahead and just, these buttons here actually jump between the layers or the subcategories inside of the properties of the paint tool. So let's go ahead, let's look at brush size. We got some like, if you scroll down, you've got alphas. I don't know if you can see that. You can kind of see that on stream. Um, I'm just gonna grab something that kind of looks see here. So go ahead, we'll add, we'll add the paint layer because somehow I deleted it. So you can kind of get rid of it like this. If you're going to do this, it's gosh darn stone material pipe ever. Oh, we'll get there. You just, you wait. We got, we got an hour and a half, man, of just substance painter. We're going down the rabbit hole. So one thing you could do is angle jitter, which kind of randomizes the direction of the, the brush. And then a position jitter will scatter it as well. So it's pretty good if you're trying to get rid of this type of uh, detail information. Just remember to feather it out a little bit so that it doesn't look like you just painted out that spot. So, and then we got some weird stretching here. I'm just gonna ignore that for now, just because we're gonna just keep moving along. Uh, Unless, no, I don't know. I don't know. So you can uh, offset these as well. Try planar offsetting. You can do it manually. But uh, yeah, so. Let's go ahead, let's turn all these back on. Looks great, right? Yeah, no, that's cool. Holding down a uh, right click and shift is how you rotate your environment. If you need to, uh, where is it at here? Display settings, which is like this little monitor thing, uh, can give you control of your environment. Default for the exposure is zero. Uh, and then there's a blur slider, which for presentation reasons looks really good. And then you've got a uh, checkbox for shadows if you need to compute shadows, which when you turn this uh, intensive, it looks pretty, looks pretty nice when it renders out. Let's go back to lightweight, we'll turn that off. Um, yeah, so let's kill that. The rabbit valve. I like it. I like it. Cheese, what's up? Killian, how you doing? Mmm. Oh man. 
good stuff. So let's uh, let's grab some other smart materials. We've got a uh, steel stained. Let's see what that looks like. We can start layering it up, right? So maybe we'll start with steel. So because it's a smart material, you can already see there's a lot more information going on here. Don't mind that seam, man. That is nasty. Um, yeah, there's a lot of uh, little subtle information going on in the roughness and just value shifts. So like, you remember if we press C, uh, you'll see what you're viewing up on the top right here. You wanna see some gold on this? Oh, we'll get some gold on there. So continue pressing C. There's no height map information, so it's just gonna be this checkerboard. So when you see the roughness, this is where a lot of information actually happens. You know, we always say on the stream, right, that the, the roughness is one of the most important maps uh, in current PB, PBR. So we'll just keep cycling through this. We got metallic as well, which is kind of a weird map because uh, usually you want it to be white and black. Um, but I guess this is like a light, this is still metal. Technically because it's got a little bit of white, everything in this is metal. Micro details and noise go into roughness. Never forget, never forget. Oh, we'll make that handle red. You wait. You wait, Michael. Uh, so press C. So there's no normal information except for what was baked. Man, that looks gross. Uh, we're going to press M, go back to this view. So it looks, I mean, it looks pretty good. If you want to do some other environments, there's a little uh, on the shelf here, there's an environment section. You can just drag them into the background and swap them out. Oh, this one. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking this environment. What is this, a bus garage? It makes sense. It makes sense. Studio 3, you highly recommend, huh? This one? Ooh. Ooh. You get that highlight there? Where are we at here? Where are we at? We can go to uh, camera settings in the display settings panel. You can tear these off, by the way. You can activate that post-processing, get our anti-alias to get all rid of these uh, little jaggies. These jaggedies. And then uh, we can just straight up, we can glare that jazz. Look at that. My God. Oh my God. <laughs> what have I done? Uh, let's go ahead and turn that off. Okay, so close that, it'll go back up here. Blue! So this looks pretty good. I mean, just putting that material on there and you've got something that back in the day was a pain to even, doing metals pre-PBR was horrible. It was horrible. You were painting specular color just to try and fake metal materials. It's so much easier now. So let's go ahead and keep this. Uh, let's let's add that gold we were talking about. Uh, so one thing that you'll never forget: Photoshop dirt painting. And 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 bump maps. Ugh. Ugh. So we've got this look. Uh, I did not paint a material ID map, which is basically like a mask. They call it a clown map, was the original name of it, I think way back in the day. But now it's just like a material ID map. And that's the, the map where like all the different parts based on the material type. Grow up, what's up? Do I spy metal object? It's true. Um, where was I? See if chat reminds me. Uh, material ID maps. What's up, Royce? So they're like clown maps. So they're just a bunch of different colors that separate out material uh, types. So like if you knew this handle was gonna be rubber, maybe you'll make that like blue uh, in the ID map, which didn't really mean anything that color other than it was a way to mask it, to be able to tag it and mask it separately. Now, because I didn't paint that, I have to mask in another way, which uh, you can do in a couple different ways. Let's first let's bring in uh, materials. Maybe maybe there's a smart material that'll work really. Bone, whoa. Aluminum. We got copper. We got gold in here. Oh my God, we got gold armor, guys. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm down. So drag that on there. Holy 
the bling. So uh, you can see that the information under the metal is gone and a whole other value is coming in. You can see if I turn off the steel stained. So everything that's in here is overriding this. Yeah, so if you have a material ID map like we were just talking about, you can now, like we were doing just a second ago, dragging on, you can drag on to material colors now. And it will it like automatically identifies it and then assigns the mask automatically to that area. Super handy. If you're doing a lot of work like this, I highly, highly suggest using material ID maps. So just like Photoshop, we'll just uh, go ahead and add a black mask to this material, this smart material. So the gold armor is now masked completely. So if you click on that mask, you can go in and paint and you can bring in the, the gold where you want. Let's see. Um, what we're going to do, because we don't have the map, is we're going to go to the polygon fill tool. Now you can fill by triangle. You can fill by polygon, you can fill by mesh fill, and then UV chunk, which is pretty interesting. Sometimes you've got like, like this is this top might be uh, uh, separate UV wise from the, so we click that. Yeah, so if I click on this once with the UV chunk, it's only filling the UV. Wow, look how inefficient that, that's gross. That should be one like continuous UV strip just for the sake of quality. Um, and it'll bake better and look better in every way. Yeah, so UV chunk is essentially like painting on a UV island. So another way to visualize this better is uh, if you press F1, you can see your UV, I always get weirded out by this, but you can see your UV uh, set on the other window too. F2 goes to this view, and F3 just does the UV islands. So then you can go in here and actually start painting these in too, if you want. So we'll go, we'll just chill in F2 because it's fine. It's fine, everything's fine. Uh, let's go ahead and um, paint some of these in, huh? So instead of UV trunk, we're gonna do um, mesh fill, which was essentially we'll uh, we know that this bolt is not welded to anything, so if you click that bolt, the whole bolt will be filled. So you can just do that, like a so. And if you marquee select, anything in the marquee will get painted as well. This is, yeah, I'm feeling this. So then once you're done, you just go back to your paintbrush and you're, you're out of that view. So let's go ahead and add like a uh, rubber material, plastic glossy. We want plastic, what is this, fake leather? Sure, sure. So apply it to the whole mesh. Wow, that edge, oh, that's great. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, um, black mask, select, and then we'll go ahead and do the polyfill again, and we'll just click this handle and then go back to this. Now we've got our fake leather uh, handle. We need to make sure to go into the group, find the base color layer, go down here to the base color, and uh, do as we promised and make this red, right? Nailed it. Oh my gosh, nailed it. Man, that is a, I don't know about that material. The gold feels so odd. I think it's because of the lighting environment. I honestly, I think it's because of the lighting environment. We're, we're using Studio 3 right now. Uh, the garage, give you a little bit better of a information. Usually you see gold outside. Man, that gold is, that is, uh, that is pretty gold. So green does have a bit uh, or gold does have a bit of green in it. Uh, let's let's see what's going on here. Yeah, 
gold. Let's uh, let's go in there. I mean, it says gold armor, so maybe it's stylized. Yeah, that's like way off. Hang on. So. So we'll bring this over here. This was captured by uh, Tiege. Um, actually, I'm gonna have to like move this so it does that, and then we'll bring this over here. Go in here. This is so janky. We'll click this guy. We'll do click the eyedrop. Hold down the eyedrop clicker, and then we'll just mouse over that. And there we go. Much more accurate, right? Feels right. Feels good. Feels good, man. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that gold feels way better. Way better. That's how important the color of metals is, guys. Without lighting, yes. Yes. Hope you guys are doing well, by the way. It's only Monday. We're just getting started, right? I've got a ton of videos to post on YouTube, by the way. i got nine videos. I'm going to post one every morning, I think. And expect some more Instagram posts. All right, so let's see what else we can do here. So remember, right-click and shift uh, to rotate that light around. Let's collapse this folder here. Collapse the gold armor. We're going to rename that real gold armor because Tiege knows. The color of metal. Gold. Like that? Like that. BBR. Feeling it. Anyways, let's continue. So, let's make a fill layer. And uh, this property fill, this is really weird when uh, you uh, look at this for the first time. Uh, so, these are all of the maps of this fill layer, right? So you've got your base color or your color, your height, rough, metal, normal. So if you don't want those properties, you just click that and it goes away from the uh, stack of, of properties. So what we want to do is just kind of click away from all that. Maybe we'll do a normal and height. Um, and then we're just going to zoom in on this area. Wow, that is some resolution, right, guys? Feels good. Feels real good. Man, zooming in on this mesh, I should have unwrapped this well. <laughs> uh, Bogdan's got a question. Are there certain value ranges you should go past, you shouldn't go past in PBR workflow that would not look realistic? So it's a little weird right now because uh, with games going towards uh, HDR, enabled games, uh, the range has become much wider in the value spectrum. But, um, yeah, you should be really careful with like how dark you go, how saturated you go, and how bright you go. Like if I, this is this is more of an eyeball. Oh, this isn't even a good. Hang on here. Where are we at? I'm sure there's a stay above 0.5 with metals. Yep, that's a good rule. Um. Wait, what? What is going on here? Oh, it's because I have the color still on. Ha! Ha! Hilarious. How dark you go is the first track of Colors of Metal. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, I'm not going to try and claim the values because a lot of the time I just, uh, like, I have a tool that tells you when you've gone too bright, when you've gone too dark, or when you've gone too saturated. And the too saturated one, it tells you actually like how far you've gone in each channel. It's pretty nice, but I'm not going to try and pretend where that range is. We should actually find a chart so that we get the right information out there. Um, so what I'm doing is this fill layer, we're gonna call this um, welds. And fill layers you can't paint on, right? 
but we're going to paint on one. We're going to do that through masks. So I'm going to put a black mask on there, and then uh, alt click that mask, and then we're just going to paint. So let's just paint some stuff here. We can see that. Press M to go back to this view. Now you don't see anything because uh, the height value default is flat. It's zero. So going down or up will give you some information, which is pretty handy. So um, paint over those dirty seams. It's not going to save us, man. I tried it this morning, and I was like, Ugh. I accept my fate. I accept my fate. So go ahead and uh, see that this is kind of working. There is some seam correction that's happening. Do you remember there's this gross seam? Like, you can see it right there. If you wait long enough, it goes away, however that works. So I am not using a weld brush. Is there a weld brush now? A welding brush? I think you have to buy that, right? Or you have to pay for it or, or find it online. I'm actually going to show you guys a cheap version. It's been in since forever. Tools? Oh my god. You guys are killing me. Oh, look at that. Okay, I gotta see this. Do I need to, I need to make like a, just a paint layer, right? My brain hurts. What am I doing here? There we go. Oh yeah. It's probably a little strong, hang on. Man, that's a that's a clean weld. Let's see here. So if we go to brush. It's actually a good starting point. Um So what you what you want to do is maybe like turn the spacing up so that there's gaps between the scale this up. Oh, as you scale it, I see. I see, I see the power now. Man, it's really big though. Oh, that's a great brush. This is way better than uh so if you go back here. Oh yeah, that looks great. Cool. Well, I don't need to show you that anymore. Golden bolts, dirty welds. Damn. <laughs> that needs to be a shirt. <laughs> yeah, so I notice if you make it smaller, you need to space it out more, right? Yeah. So as you as you shrink the brush, we're not even, we don't even have the resolution to be doing what we're trying to do right now. Okay, so yeah, so then you could go like along this. It looks so dirty from this close. But if you go back, I mean, it's acceptable. 100 bits, party, party. Can you, can we fake the, like that? party yeah that is pretty annoying about the resolution I mean we could turn it up and see what happens to the stream <laughs> so if you go to the texture set settings you can go here we can go 4k if you want this is also a byproduct of doing the auto UVs is we weren't able to utilize uh, where where our resolution will go right so if you Go back. I mean, that looks pretty good. It's implying enough that you're like, oh, that was welded on there. Now, one thing to uh, keep in mind is like, we're drawing the welds like this, but you can, if you need to, you can click and then hold shift. So you can get those nice, clean. Oh, right. That's not going to work.
Works for me. Works for me. I don't know why these would be welded. That doesn't make any sense at all. But uh, let's let's keep going, huh? Substances voodoo. Change the object. Change the object or viewport. What do you mean? You talking about in here? Or are you talking about uh, object to viewport? Oh, look at that. Oh. That's a pretty good. Uh, size space? Is that where you're. Back face culling? What happens if you turn that on? Can I? Nope. <laughs> Wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah, so welds, just so everyone that is just seeing this for the first time, there's a weld brush in tools. You just need to make uh, a layer that you can paint on. And then you just have to like, it looks really good when you scale it up. Um, there's a few properties you're gonna have to adjust, like the, um, the stroke, or the, uh, sorry, the spacing. Spacing's fine until you start getting real small and then you should space it out a bit more. That is, that's cool. That's fun. Yeah, the fill example, okay, the fill example could be good to show. Uh, so let's go ahead and delete that layer. Um, so if you make a fill layer, we'll turn off all the maps except for uh, the height and normal. We'll give that layer a uh, a black mask so that it's all masked out. Alt click that mask so we can see what we're doing. You can actually uh, use the weld alpha if you wanted to for this approach. If you wanted the um, if you want to control over the weld material later, so like let's do this. So if you do like that, that's the mask. Go back to this. You don't see it, but that's because the height is flat. So we can turn that up. So this will give us control post paint of the height map. So which is, in my opinion, I think is actually going to be better than just using the tool straight up on a paint layer. This actually gives you control over uh, the strength post paint. Um, so we'll go back to that mask. Let's just do this a little bit. We'll scale the brush up and do a little bit more. We'll just kind of look at the welds now, now we're working with them. Um, we'll go into that fill layer and then you can actually, hey thanks man, nice welding magic. <laughs> Ludicrous, ludicrous. Um, so if you go to this this fill layer, obviously I'm just doing the height and the normal right now, but you could go material mode, click that, and then give it like copper. Uh, let's see here, height? No, no height. That's cool. There we go. So maybe maybe you welded with copper for whatever reason. So you can see how much more powerful it is to use a fill layer and then just use this weld brush that's found in tools as the alpha painter. Because it's, it's doing some cool, it's interesting. Because the, the way the alpha is, see how it's, it's heavy on one side and then it fades? Oh man. Yeah, if you want the rainbow welds, um, there's actually a really good uh, welding kit you can buy for um, Substance Painter. Welding kit, it's like real life, but digital. So let's, uh, let's go back to this. Uh, we'll paint on here. I'm not seeing anything. It's because I undid enough that you're losing the height map. So the other nice thing is if you press X, you can invert How dare you? Thanks, man. He did it. <laughs> I can't help it. The dance. So that's kind of cool. You can, um, 
if you want, you can erase it. You just press X, paints white. You press X again, it inverts the paint. Paint uh, black, because you know you're just painting in the mask, right? So, so let's go ahead and delete all that jazz. Okay, so actually, so a combination of the weld tool to paint in the mask is actually, I think, the best approach with the fill layer because you get a lot of post control, uh, post paint control. Okay, let's go ahead and delete that. We'll go in, let's add a few welds just so that we have some around. Turn the spacing up because this is really small. Let me go into this layer, turn that up. Let's do this. Oh, I'm painting black. I thought it was just because the strength was low. So the other thing you can do with this is like um, position jitter. If you make those wider and then increase this, uh, decrease the spacing, you can get some like really janky, like I'm terrible at welding look. Uh, let's turn the flow up a bit. Yeah, that's some, that is some bad welding guys. I need to learn you some welding. Let's uh, do that. Oh, this is so fun. Oh my, oh my gosh. What is happening here? Um, brushes. Just erase that jazz. Okay, so we got some welding in there, that's cool. Uh, what else can we do here? So if you want this to look pretty old, maybe like a dusting layer. It's got a little bit of that dusting look going on there. Like maybe, so that's in the steel itself. Let's go into that folder. We'll just mess around with that for a little bit. That's the dirt. Yeah, ooh, there's some nice, like just roughness breakup. And that subtle like normal information that's happening in there looks pretty nice as well. They need to code in the uh, spacing by brush size. That would be pretty useful for sure. I'm assuming it's because my asset is kind of small. I don't know. Maybe that's maybe that's wrong to think that way. Um, let's go ahead and look at this dirt. So these these smart masks are man. They are everything. They uh, they make stuff super easy. Yeah, this is still in 2K, Scott. I didn't turn it up to 4K because I don't want the stream to choke. I mean, we could try. Uh, a lot of the times, just for speed's sake, uh, I'll work at like 10K, maybe 2K, just to s throw everything on, right? And then when you start fine tuning details and the look and feel, then you turn it up to like 2K. 10K, wow. I didn't say that. Shh. Did I say 10K? That's hilarious. I'm thinking about how Matt posted his uh, blog post on 10K. That guy, too kind. Uh, let's uh, let's look at. Let's pretend. Did I do that? So I said 10K instead of 1K. Uh, that's funny. Next gen H Dizzle. Uh, yeah. So let's go into this dirt here. We can tone it down too if we want. Oh man, toning it down probably will help with that horrible stretching that's occurring. So if we go back to this look and then we'll go back here. Dude, it's crazy how much that subtle like roughness change affects things. <laughs> Shadow Mordor was actually one texture. <laughs> uh, that's amazing. Okay, so I think I think I'm pretty happy with the that dirtiness stuff there. Maybe um, maybe I'll make it a little bit darker, just so that um, we can really see the dust. I'm like, wait, what? So you notice I'm making the value all the way dark, and it's not doing anything. I wonder if it's because the opacity of the layer is lower. Whoa. 
very confused. So we're in the base color. This is another thing that's kind of weird. So you've got all these layers, right? But then like you also have like the height equivalent of each layer, the metallic and the normal. But uh, we're just uh, we're just in the dirt here, and for some reason, must be the way that because it's that is strange. Man, when I got into games, people were like, "Don't go past like the hero material was was one k." I remember that. The average material was like uh, using 512s and 256s. <laughs> it's like, seems like it was so long ago. So why? That is interesting. I guess because it's metal that's under it, it's just not going to it's not going to contribute to the value. That is interesting. Man, that sharpen too is uh, doing magic. I never use the sharpen uh, layer, but holy cow, that does a lot. It applies a lot of like grittiness. Uh, what's bugging me? So we've got this dirt layer. And I've effectively made the albedo black, but that does not seem to be doing anything. And I'm assuming it's because the roughness is so high? No. Oh, that is weird. Yeah, check base color. So here's the base color. I guess because it's not spreading very much. Let's let's look at the Oh, look at this. That's why. So the dirt mask was set to 75%, so it never hit full uh full uh, value of whatever you were inputting. Okay. So if we turn that all the way up, this is going to look terrible. You ready? Okay, so definitely dark now. Uh, let's go ahead and light that, lighten that up. So the fall off you're seeing here is actually a roughness transition before allowing you to see the albedo. That's interesting. Anywho, okay, so let's uh, let's scale back on that a little bit. Wow, that's strange looking. Let me just keep going back. Let's look at the color. Color's black still, so we're gonna turn that up back to a lighter value. So let's go ahead and let's add some dust. Is this piece part of a larger scene? No, this actually, I made this just for the stream today. So it's just so that we can, and I'll probably use it from time, time and time again, just to like, it's a good like shape study for things when you're trying to do material painting or trying to explain something in Substance Painter. I think it will uh, work out pretty well for us, for example. Just to show, yeah, Tiege knows what's up. <laughs> um, all right, let's let's add that dust, huh? So we'll collapse these down. We've got our plate, uh, fake leather stuff up here. We've got our real gold armor uh, and our s steel that is stained. We've got a weld going on here. Let's go ahead and add a, uh, a fill layer. And... Um, well, actually, instead of using a smart material, we'll start with like 
What is this one? Concrete Dusty. I'm curious what that looks like. So let's let's just drag that in here. Wow. So I like the breakup that's happening on it. Let's see what we can control in here. So we've got technical parameters. So we want to turn the normal off. We want to turn the height off. Height position doesn't matter. We just need it to be soft. So maybe this is more like, this could kind of be like ash if you wanted. Uh, dirt amount. Oh, that's interesting. We'll just turn that up. Oh, we don't need to screw the hue, maybe luminosity. So that's kind of like a, almost like an ash, if you will. It's like it's a little fleck of stuff in it. Channel mapping, yeah, we don't need any of that stuff other than what's there already. Uh, let's make sure it's triplanar. Triplanar is nice because see, then you can just tile it however you need. So we'll go ahead and just like, maybe we'll make this like five. Uh, it's a little too tiley maybe. Four, there we go, that works. Okay, so let's say this is our dust. So we can go into smart masks and there's tons of them, right? We'll make this large so you can see them. Uh, and there's tons of like, like pre-created masks. Sebastian, what's up, man? How you doing? Whew. Dude, thanks for that prime, man. And the bits, you guys are dope. So we can do dust soft. So just dragging that stuff on there, right? You get the mask. Let's see, let's see what's going on in this mask. Wow, it is really soft, huh? Oh wait. Yeah, that's a smart mask. What? Oh, I see. We have our other material under it. I was like, what is going on? So drag that under there. And then let's, as you can see, it's adding, yeah, it's adding some stuff, but it's, it's much more, looks cloudy. Are you going to the Promised Land Festival? I probably not. Man, I have no time ever. Yo. Binary, you're awesome. Thanks, man. Okay, so let's see. Let's see if we can salvage this at all. Feels bad, man. Tobias knows. He he visited once, and I told him I couldn't hang out. <laughs> and it was a it was it was like after work and everything, and I'm like, I can't do it, man. I'm sorry. So. This is this mask is basically doing what the other mask was doing. You stood the Tobias up. Sad reality. No, I did not. You can't stand up that hair. So this I don't like this one. It just it isn't gonna behave how like I want it to. And you can see me doing this. It's because I'm trying to fight a sneeze that's like coming. I've learned if you press right here. Pro tip right here. Press right here. Usually makes the sneeze go away. I don't know why. Probably distracts your brain or something. Uh, let's try moss from top. Now the reason I'm saying moss from top, not because it's moss. Embrace it. Sneeze tricks. <laughs> moss from top. It's not moss, but I like what this mask is doing and maybe we can hijack its properties and have it do what we want. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? All right, let's alt click that mask. Let's see what's going on here. So we go in here. Oh, I was even using the legacy uh, mask builder generator. So if you click this guy, there's other generators in here and you can do some pretty cool stuff uh, inside of these. There's some amazing fanciness. Basically these generators allow access to a lot of these type of sliders. You know to me? Could you, uh, you want to link that in chat, Binary? I'd be curious to see, see this thing you were talking about. So, 
We can do things like contrast, which we probably don't want because dust tends to be quite soft, right? And then maybe we want to tone the level back and then dust collecting on the edges is kind of weird. Maybe it does collect on edges, but not that heavily. Turn the triplaner on. You see how much of a difference that makes. Grunge, let's see what grunge does. Uh, we don't want the want a little grunge. So remember, it's soft. We're going for soft. Let's see what the AO is doing. Oh, that's interesting. Oh wait, AO's here. That's like I was like, why is it affecting the curvature? <laughs> so dust in the AO makes sense. Um yeah, we're just kinda to be honest, we're just kinda going down the line here. Definitely world space normal is going to be your directional information. So curvature, we probably want to tone down. Yeah, see this is getting under here, which is really weird. Why would that happen? Let's see this thing. So this mask generator. Oh yes. No, this this mask generator is pretty uh pretty impressive. I actually uh do need to download this. You can there's a lot of stuff you can do in this in this mask generator. Wow. Wow. Thanks, binary. We'll uh if we got time, we'll look at that. So we got 45 minutes to go. We're just kind of messing around with materials. If you guys have any questions, just throw them out there, or things that you just want to discuss that involve substance painter. We we'll just keep the ball rolling. So top down gradient. That's why it's going under there. It's just the gradient. We don't need a top down gradient. What we need is a world space top intensity. See that? So this is like what Tobias was saying just a second ago. Um, top intensity is just utilizing, you see down here, the input maps. If these are blank, visual, what's up, man? So if these are blank, like world space normals, that means that you need to actually go up here, go to bake, and then bake your world space normal. That way you can utilize this aspect of the uh, section here, of the generator, which is the world space normal section. So what you want is actually a top intensity. Like that's doing, that's doing some nice stuff for us. Might be a little strong on that. Let's see if we can, let's see if the scratches, whoa, that's weird. So we do scratches like that and then maybe like Get the little drop down for scratches. Maybe we can scale it. Oh, that's weird. Amount, we need to cut down. It's so like generated looking, not a fan. Just want a few scratches. Sure, that works. So press M and go back to this view. So you see we're getting a nice uh, dust coating on there. Let's see what, yeah, look at that. Nom, 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 nom. Nom, 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 nom. So good. Tasty. Delicious. And you see, like, what that's doing to the, uh, so in the base color, it's definitely filling in that top, top layer with, uh, all the detail. You see how it's, like, caking into here? Mmm. Mmm. What is this one? Height information? Oh, interesting. It's feeding some height data. Mm, I don't know. I don't know if I like that. So if we go back to the the top of that, the concrete dusty, which we should probably rename so we don't get it confused. This is like when you've seen me streaming before and then I'm like, oh, we'll just make this concrete into like sand or something. It's like me hijacking what was initially intended and then just utilizing the noise to imitate another noise. So this, we're getting height information and you can see we're in the height channel right now. We're, we got there by pressing C. So let's, uh, let's go back to that. Oh. oh, that's interesting. 
So if you hold H, you can step backwards. So C to go forwards, holding Shift and C will go backwards. So if you need to check your normal and then, or check your base color and your mask and your base color and your mask. Okay, so click on this layer. We'll scroll down here. Height information, we don't need that. So you uncheck that. We don't need metal information. And we, all we want is the color. The mask kind of looks like rust flakes. Mmm, rust flakes. That's a good cereal. Um, this is also giving us, okay, that's weird. Hang on here. That's probably coming from this. Yeah. And then the gold is also giving us some height information. So basically, I don't, I don't want anything in there if I'm, if I'm not using it. I mean, it is, ah, there's information in there. It's screwing with something. I'll just turn that off. Dude, there's even a little bit there, wherever that's coming from. Oh my god, I'm going to lose my mind. My old coat was made of styrofoam. <laughs> I mean, when it looks right, it looks right, which is weird, right? Okay, where is this coming from? Okay, so there's information here. This one's surface detail. Dang. No, we gotta leave that. Cause like, that's how the gold is getting its like tooth. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, so let's keep going through. Oh man, I'm sweating now. It's, it's warm in here, guys. It's warm in here. The UVs are really bad. <laughs> this this would look much higher res if I did the UVs by like manually. But it's it's getting by. They are flat at least. Yeah. I mean it's probably skewing the crap out of the uh, UVs. Dude, look at that. Look how gross. Like, ugh, ugh. That's kind of cool looking at it like this. I love that the lighting affects the... You know what I haven't used is the... Um, I don't even know where it is. The text tool. I like this dust though. This I think this dust is working. Do you want to see the high poly? It's kind of funny. That's the high poly. Oh, sorry, hang on. Yeah, that's the high poly. Uh, I thought there was a text tool in Painter. Give me a second. I'm pretty sure there was, unless I'm hallucinating. Let's go ahead and make a add a layer. We'll bring that all the way up to the top here. Yeah, it is pretty limited. I think you're right. Noble, what's up? Is that the high poly? How how come there's hard edges? It's the it's a moto thing. <laughs> yeah, it's a moto thing. Uh, those because the hard edges, I'm I'm using the round edge shader, which like ends up looking um, like like this. Whoop. So minus the terrible padding from the auto unwrap, normally that wouldn't be a problem. But like this here, I'm just applying a round edge value that gets baked out when I bake it. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know why the Substance Painter doesn't, uh, I don't know why Substance Painter doesn't utilize the um, your Windows library of text. Where do you do that though? Like, 
What's this one? It's the share website. We got our eraser, paint physical. Uh, we got projection, smearing, textures. Alphas font, thank you. Alphas font. Oh, that's weird. Oh, so they come in like that? Oh, that's super strange. And then I guess you uh, you type in. Whoops. What? And the size? Oh, that's really weird. Oh, the resolution doesn't even... Oh, that's so strange. I'm just going to go here. Again, I would use... I would use a fill layer and turn everything off. And then in the masks, add this. What is that? It's like gonna spray it randomly. I don't like this guys. I don't like what's going on here. Angle jitter, we don't want angle jitter. We don't want flow jitter. We don't want size jitter. We just want text. And then we want the angle. Okay, and then. Oh, that's so weird. And then you have to change the size so that it fits inside of the brush. <laughs> this song. So, okay, and then I'm painting in the mask. Boop. Let's see. Okay, it's there. Dope. Dope. I guess maybe you maybe you'd want that to be inset. I don't know. No, that looks weird. All right, let's see if we can add some rust, huh? Do you guys want to do anything else on the uh, on this type of stuff? Let's go materials. That's no rust. Well, it's still rust. Not as interesting, of course. Rust coarse. Rust fine. I like the color of that rust. Feels good. Feels good. So you want it under the dust, of course. Probably want it over the, the gold but you don't want it uh, on the leather, because that'd be weird. So then we'll just go into the smart masks. Let's see Let's see what they have for rust. So I'll type in rust. I got rust ground. Dude, this song is killing me. I don't know about, I don't know. Um, surface rust, maybe? Does gold rust? I Honestly, I don't even know. I don't know, man. I think gold um, oxidizes, which means it darkens, right? So if we oxidize gold and look at an image search of it,
Yeah, so gold does not, it, it oxidizes, but the question is, is what color does it become when it oxidizes? Gold doesn't react to ox oxygen then? What? So wait, what? What? <laughs> Gold tarnishes? Yeah, so it just becomes kind of... Okay, so we're looking at some old gold here. Oh yeah, so it just kind of... That's why they use it on spacecraft. Wait, curious. Is Tobias telling me that there's oxygen in space? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Uh, orange and darker. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it kind of looks like maybe like a cavity darkening and then roughness in general just kind of goes goes kind of crazy. So like let's grab this rust real quick here. Let's look at the mask for it. Ooh. Uh, uh, you guys is uh is chat delayed a little bit? I'm curious. It seems like there's some delayed reactions, but I don't know. Maybe like trying to decide if you should laugh or not through text. Mm. Yeah, triplaner's on on that guy. Da -da 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 -da. Triplaner. There we go. 2,000 year old gold. Wow, that's crazy. 11 second delay. There must be some big streamers on tonight. So, okay, let's look at the, let's go back at this. We'll go back to this one. Let's look at the mask for this. Contrast for the rust. Wow, that looks really weird. Not really a fan. The transition from one material to another with the roughness being different gives you this weird like uh, haloing effect. Nathan, what's up, man? How you doing? I'm not. I'm not feeling this. I'm not feeling this rust stuff going on here. Uh, Let's, um, I mean, I guess you could go into the gold here and then maybe like, whoa, what? AO darken. Oh, that's weird. Oh, whoa. So this is really interesting. Uh, they're using, at least in the way that this has been saved uh, in the smart material, they're using the AO dirt. What is that? That's just a mask builder. That's using world space. It's using the AO. And then they're using that to tarnish the gold a little bit. That's interesting. Did you see what's going on there? I wonder if that's uh, coming through in the roughness. It is, look at that. Huh. That is, that is a weird generator. Add some stitching to those seams. <laughs> you get out of here. <laughs> Gotta stitch those up, man. Let it heal. Okay, what were you saying in the...
That halo effect does not show up in the spec gloss workflow. Oh, that is interesting. Yeah, it did look like paint, didn't it? I, like it wasn't building up in the right areas. So it's like a failure of uh, the mask we were using. So let's, um, you were saying fingerprints. I guess, is that an alpha? Oh, look at that. So it does require the material to be pretty, um, all right, that's that. Uh, let's go ahead and make another layer. We'll kill all this stuff. We just want the roughness, right? And then we will add a mask to this. And then, boop. Maybe. Huh. Oh god, dude, that's funny. Like, how did he do that? How did he melt his hand like that? Floyd jitter? What? Flow jitter? I was like, what do you mean? Small hands, small hands, that's not bad. Oh, it's so subtle. So oily, his fingerprints, so oily. Let's see what else we can do here. Boop. Yeah, so you're talking about uh, flow jitter and then maybe angle jitter. <laughs> this is weird, man. <laughs> so funny. What is that, little hands? Anyways. Now make them red blood. <laughs> Any residue slightly diminishes metallic. Uh, so... How large is that value, or how small is that hand? The white hand of Saruman. Oh my god, look at the... That is some grease. So with, with this one up here, we should actually... Um, let's, let's remove that with a, t a bunch of little tiny hands. So we should actually go into the dust layer, and then add a uh, paint. And then... And do. There we go. There it is. Remove the dust. This one's cool though, because it's removing the dust, right? Little, little tiny hands. <laughs> little tiny hands everywhere. Anywho, uh, as far as this oily stuff goes, it's probably a little too oily. Just tone that down. People are oily, man. It's gross. It's all good though. We still we still like people. They're just really oily. 
Oh, I just saw a drop of sweat, guys. Gross. Dude, three weeks. Three weeks from now, I'm going to move. And the streaming room is going to get much larger. So, okay. We got 20 minutes. Let's, um... Let's group all these. Is this real life? Perfect. Turn that off. Let's, um... Oh, you wait, Lucas. I got plans. I got plans, man. <laughs> Need a larger streaming room so you can have more polys. And some water leaks. Oh, that's a great idea, the water leaks. I mean, we'll, we'll leave it at this because, like, we've been going at that for a little while. Let's, um... Let's add a layer. No, let's add a fill layer. No, actually, we do need to add a layer because um, we need them brushes. Where is the thing with the stuff? Oh, dang, I don't know where it's at. Ah, oh, no, it's right here. Nice. So we got 20 minutes. I'm going to plug in the, uh, oh, it's going to fall. The Wacom. Uh, about two versions ago, maybe one version ago, the, uh, Substance Painter had an update that actually allowed for you to paint on your model at a much higher speed. Um, or like frame rate. So we're going to look at that a little bit. Uh, press. Let's actually, so. So I'll make that high. We'll go. Uh, we'll add a fill layer. And this fill layer will have nothing on it except color. Let's go ahead and just um, press M. So we're just looking at this or C base color. We're going to um, we'll do that. And then uh, let's see here. Do you guys know if there is a good way to, uh, oh, that's nice. It's just like, uh, it's just like Photoshop. So if you hold down control, I'm using pressing this little button here, um, to soften and harden and then left and right will scale the brush. So let's go ahead. And if you tap on that button too, you get all of your, your controls. So maybe we don't need height, we just need color. And let's let's go. So you can see it's much faster painting directly on the mesh. And like of course I can't see anything, right? So maybe we need to do this for a little while. What we need actually, this fill layer needs to have, uh, we need a smart material. No, sorry, we need a smart mask that actually gives us some information. So we'll just do this a base color. We need to dupe this. Alt uh, drag up will dupe just like Photoshop. Take this one, we'll make this one darker. I'll put that under actually, and then
not AO, dust occlusion. We'll do that. Sorry, we need to put that on the top layer. So we're gonna dust occlusion. So you can kind of see stuff, right? So what we're looking for is actually a dirt contrast. We need to lower that. Expand that. Uh, well, sure, we'll use a triplanar. Uh, we don't need, so the grunge can be there. Man, that, no, this, I don't like that one. We need something better. Occlusion strong, sure. There we go. Okay, and then if we go into that and we can actually uh, remove the textures, then we just get some some nice uh, gradients and blur that. Oh man, that's not gonna work. <laughs> that blurring is not gonna work. Uh, attributes. I made occlusion. Balance. Oh, that kind of does it. Uh, just add the occlusion map in a fill in the mask. You, I didn't even realize you could do that. So you're talking about you go here and then you go to project, animate occlusion. How do you do that? You know what I'm saying? Grayscale. This one? Does that work? No. Fill layer. Hang on here. Okay, so fill layer. And then base color. Oh, wait. <laughs> no! Bitmap mask instead of black mask. Add the fill layer to the mask. Oh. Like this, and then like this. Look at that. Oh, you guys are great. That helps immensely. This shows how much I do uh, painted textures. <laughs> so we're going full on experimental now, for sure. That's so much faster, dude, that's like way faster. I didn't even know that was there. So add bitmap. This is where you can add the mask for the ID maps too, just as a FYI. Yeah, and then you can add level. Oh, that's right. You can do uh, add levels, and then you can shift this around. Oh, that's good. That's good. I like. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so then we can go to this one. I drop this color. We'll make a lighter version, much lighter. Yeah, dude, the painting in this is so much faster, it's crazy. So, like, see if you wanted to, you could really. Um, hardness, we can lower that. Let's see here. Flow. Yeah, so if you wanted to do like edge highlights, you could you could paint those in yourself. It's a pretty good way if you're like going for stylized painting. Now the nice thing is the smudging. <laughs> with the, <laughs> we're not smudging with that. Uh, the smudging is quite fast. So if you needed to do some some nice gradients to smudge the the transition around, oh, we 
we need to kill that scattering. Uh, position, angle jitter, flow jitter, size jitter, we don't need size jitter. So like if you wanted, you could go like, uh, man, I need to, it's like you want to save your, flow. So you could do, if you wanted to stylize highlight, I guess you could do this. Like it's, dude, it's so fast now. And it doesn't blur the uh, the stuff on other layers, which is pretty nice. It's getting some dark value from somewhere. Sorry. Uh, hmm. Three D coat looms in the background. That's funny. Is there a uh, hotkey for eye dropping? There's got to be. I thought there was. Dude, 14 months too, man. Thanks, man. That's crazy. So, you know, we're always talking about, uh, in the Discord, we're always talking about, like, stylized and, like, what that means. And really, I, in my opinion, stylized is just a bunch of rules. It's like rule sets to fit a theme um, or a look. So like if all of your shadowed areas, let's go ahead and erase that stuff. So like it's following like a, a rule set P. Oh, you're right. Oh, that's great. That's a weird button to have it on, but yeah. So like if, if I uh, I drop that and then maybe we'll go down here and we'll grab like a slightly darker color. So following a, a rule set, like maybe wherever um, under shadows are would, would be um, like, and I'm doing like outlining, those would be dark. So wherever the high points are, always having those high points as like, or those high edge highlights, having those in a smaller area uh, on the top of like a matching color. So maybe this is where like I need to get used to color theory again. I don't even think about this stuff very much anymore. It's just like autopilot. Um, so if we grab that, maybe we'd go for a more saturated. If we go for the chromatic approach, wow, that's way too. That's not working at all. Hmm. I'll just go for the for the true highlight. See the other thing is holding shift to to get that to just follow. It's kinda nice. What's with the weird? <laughs> What's wrong, binary? Is 
This is some of the older, oh wow. That uh, back face is not on for sure. Oh, no. I'm like, what is the, okay, five and one and two for eraser, one for brush. Flow some. There's a plugin too. Where do I have that plugin still? Auto save, substance, palette color, reload. Where is it? There it is. Nice. This thing here. Is this uh, terrible? Yes, it is. Okay, so this thing was a plugin that I downloaded a while back uh, where you can pick colors and then save them. So maybe paint some highlights. And then maybe I need to go down to a darker value. No, what is that? Why is that not switching? Oh, because you have to press, press P? No, no, that's not working at all. How does that work? I'm like, what? Have you ever used this program before? I've never hand painted really in here before. It's like binary, have you ever subbed before? Oh, wait a minute, three times. <laughs> it's like, dang it, I screwed that one up. Way to go, Tim. Oh man, oh, every time, pressing B for brush. Yeah, so this is very manual uh, processes. So like, oops, what, um, what Tej is saying is you can do a lot of, uh, a lot of this stuff procedurally or with the assistance of maps, right? Or baked maps. A lot of what actually uh, Blizzard does with their stylized stuff, they have like a process they go through um, prior to, um, so like if we needed this to be highlights, we could use that same attribute, but then instead of uh, the AO, we're gonna actually use like some smart masks. Let's uh, so kill that. And then I guess you could use the curvature. Um, we can look at some smart masks too. in the end that's really all it is right so probably don't need to sharpen and this mask you probably could the other thing that will be required of you if you're if you're doing a lot of this stuff with masks is you're going to need uh, better better maps uh, that you bake from you know what I'm saying a little contrast Tone these, tone these down. Yeah, you can also add the curvature as a map. Um, let's let's see how that goes. What am I doing? Wow, I already forgot. <laughs> It's so funny, Phil, there it is. Dude, I'm getting tired, man. I blame it on the tired.
it is. Yeah, and then I got some weird errors. So th see, this would require some really, uh, really uh, good bakes because now I'm getting the errors from the uh, initial like unwrap. Like there's some pretty crap stuff in here. Uh, I could go actually if I go to levels and then just wipe out the uh, the darks value. Hang on here. Luminance. Do that and then there we go. Need to wipe the gray too. Wipe the gray away. I mean, I wonder if you can. Uh, TJ, I get the feeling you've done this before. I wonder if you can just do like a. Uh, it's like there a, is there a filter that you could use, like a blend mode that would not overlay. Many times that's awesome. That's good, man. You can tell me things. Like what are you doing, Dan? Oh shit, it's 10.03. I gotta go, guys. Um, this is pretty fun, though. I'll tell you what, man. Time to pet Mario. It's true. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for uh, going through this ride with me. It's pretty fun. It's good. It's good. I hope, hopefully, you guys learned some stuff. I know I picked up on some things. Um, yeah, I think the next video uh, that we do that'll be more in depth like this, I think we're going to talk about composition, like elements of composition and stuff like that. I'll just lay out some fake spaces with blocks and stuff and just talk about like what makes it an image interesting. Yeah, composition's really important. Anyways, alright guys. Thank you for hanging out. Fireworks and Maru bubbles for you. It's so bubbly. Thank you for all of the uh the follows and the subs. Thanks, Jason. No, thank you. Snickers, what's up? Sai, man, you guys just lurking. Oh, I like it. Join the Discord if you haven't. You can hang out. We can all chat about this stuff. The talk usually does not end. But, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Get some credits rolling for you. All right, later, guys. Have a uh, productive week.